Thanksgiving's right around the corner. I'm about to show you guys how we do our Thanksgiving turkey. Completely different, I can promise you. You guys stay tuned. All right, before we dive deep in this turkey, I'm talking about like deep inside of it. Let's give you a little method behind the badness. About six years ago, it was my turn to uh, host Thanksgiving. So my family are like vultures. I hope they're not watching this video. We call ourselves the clumps. They'll come after you for some food. We always show up. Our family likes a really good potluck. We take our food serious. I'm just telling you flat out. So typically the host will do the turkey. And all in the past, it seems like we can never nail the turkey. We've tried it deep fried. We've tried it stuffed. Uh, we've tried it. Uh, seasoned. I have not found another way that makes it as juicy and as flavorful as what we're about to show you. And this is not for views. This is just the Williams family tradition. No kidding. I don't care about the presentation. We're not putting foley green around it. We're not putting cranberries around. I've never taken a turkey to the table and carved it for my family. Absolutely not. They would they would have a fit. They want it right here. So we all come in buffet style, we get it, and we go. So it got me thinking one year. How can you really get a juicy turkey? The, the trick is cooking it even. Yes, you can put the whole turkey in the oven. But what if we cut the whole turkey in half? Then all of a sudden you're on an equal playing field between the breast and the thighs. Yes, they have to cook at different temperatures. But you're not worried about all the stuff steaming and soaking and boiling on the bottom. You're not really worried about overcooking it because now it's a lot flatter. Some people call it spatchcock. That's when you just open it flat out. We're going to separate the two completely. That's one. Two, if you're on the fence about brining, I swear on everything that is the flat top king, I promise you, I don't know if you'll go back. I've tried to make my own brine, and by the time I put everything in the buggy, I'm like, for $4.99, it's just cheaper to buy the stuff. So I personally buy my brawn every single year. I actually buy two because we do Thanksgiving in the spring because I like it so much. Once we had it that time, have we ever went back? No. Could you ever have a turkey without brawn again? I could never have turkey another way besides this way. It is the best. The only bad thing is though, is that everyone loves it so much. So there is never any turkey leftovers for like turkey sandwiches for the next week. Oh, and you put on one of those rolls left over too, stuff in there with a little mayonnaise, a so little cracked might, pepper. If this turkey is so good, you might need to make two turkeys. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> well, that's the idea. That's why we're making it now. All right. All right. So let's go over this stuff. So this says dissolve in a gallon of water. Okay. The way we do it is a little bit different. All I'm going to do is add enough water to dissolve it completely. You don't need much. I did have this on high. I'm just gonna crank it up a little bit. Mm, it's got rosemary, cracked uh, black pepper, orange peel, sage leaves. Um, it's got thyme in there. Looks like it's got cranberries, salt, sugar, and whatever secret spices they talk about, okay? I love the brine method, period. The skin, okay, is protective layer for the meat. If you start marinating this, that's why people want to stuff it. Nothing's going to penetrate this skin unless you open it up and allow the juices to come into the through the meat side. That's why I open my turkey up. It's more flavorful. I'll talk while I'm doing it. I save all my stuff. So we're doing everything from, that's a piece of fat. What else we got in there? Gizzards, that's liver. That's how it comes? Yeah. It comes in a plastic bag? I mean, seriously, that's they how put the plastic bag in with the oh, stuff. Honey, the turkey comes like that. I mean, I've never cooked a turkey myself. You've never even seen the inside of a turkey. That is true. I've never right. opened the package of turkey. Let's get started. Enough, 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 enough. Okay. There's the breast. So to do this, you obviously need a couple pieces of equipment. You would need equipment anyway, just for the brawn. But I'm going to show you like a quick little way. I oh, just got... Oh. Press pause. Should you put on black gloves? Because you're going to get ripped for not having gloves on. No. Okay. No, absolutely not. My house, my rules. All right. So kitchen shears, 
I just go straight up the backbone. Find the middle. You can buy, find a um, a good meat cleaver right there. Okay. Right through the breastbone. Sometimes the best food, you just gotta get a little dirty. See, this is some of the stuff you never see because you're always watching the seven day parade. Oh no, that's the day before. Yeah. All right, so now that we got it opened up, the reason why I did it that way just shows you the rib cage. One way to cheat is just to come, if you're saving the, all this stuff, go ahead, save your fat. Save your extra skin, all that. That's all flavor for your gravy later. All right, so just like right there, right? So all you do is just come, you just cheat. See how the bone's in the middle? So just pick a side. And a good pair of kitchen shears should get you right through. The hardest thing is the breastbone. Once you get through the breastbone, the rest of it's pretty easy. Gonna be a nasty looking video. <laughs> okay, just like that. There's no reason to cut this other side out. I use it for flavor. Just like that. I know it's a mess, but we're about to start brining it. Clean all the stuff up that you don't want in there. Just like that, okay? I take the tips of the wings off because nobody in my family eats the tips and I'd much rather have it for stock. Same thing, just find the joint, open it up, use your shears, use a knife, whatever. Let's see if she can show them right. Right there, see how it's breaking apart? Just like that. All right, so that goes in there. There we go, just like that. See that mostly everything already is dissolved. I'm going to cut the heat, pull it off the heat. And right now, this is super, super, super concentrated. I would not even taste taste that. All right. I know it's gonna be kind of awkward, but I'm gonna show you guys right here. There's different types of coolers. I trust my cooler. I've done it before. I take a 10 pound bag of ice, and I put it in my cooler. Make sure your drain plug's closed. Yes, my cooler's clean. So if I put a big bird in here now, imagine what would happen. You either have to flip the bird yourself over and over and over again throughout the course of, let's say, 24 hours. Or if you break the turkey in half, you can go skin side down, breast side down, and all that liquid will absorb. You see what I'm saying? Because there's a lot more surface area to cover. So with our concoction, Right in there, just like that. Take our ice cold turkeys. Put them right in there, skin side down. like that okay. all right so just a quick little recap because i'm sure that i got ahead of myself and i did not finish my thought i know on two different items so the brining process is in place we're going to let it sit overnight tomorrow we'll come back we're going to bake the turkeys and i'll show you guys what temperature and how we do that and why we do it the science behind the brining is because of the salt and the sugar it pulls and pushes moisture out of the out of the turkey but allows once it pulls it's also pulling and the salt and the sugar. So what it, what it does is it allows the flavors to really, really penetrate the meat. And I personally feel like flavor-wise, it's unmatched, period. It's not like overpowering, but it just gives the turkey just a little bit of oomph, almost like just a tad bit of just flavor that sometimes it just doesn't seem like it has. What I was talking about earlier about the temperature, 
is if you feel uncomfortable doing this, try it on something else for a couple hours. Know your equipment before you do it like this. The most important thing to know is your danger zones. Somewhere right around, you know, like 41 degrees, depends on what state you're in, or 40 degrees, somewhere through there, is your danger zone. I know for a fact my cooler with this process will stay like this overnight, no problems. Talking about the remote thermometer. If you have the remote thermometer and you put it in your meat because you feel more comfortable doing that, then do it. If you want to add more ice, add more ice. I don't really think it's going to hurt you uh, by diluting it because it's so strong, but I'd much rather you guys be safe than sorry. All right, just to clarify really quick, when you're talking about the danger zone and the temperature of the turkey, since you're leaving it out overnight, see, I don't have enough space in my refrigerator. So this is what started the process. This is just a quick look at our refrigerator. There's no way I can brine a turkey in my refrigerator. So luckily enough, we had a cooler that we trusted. Um, but if you guys are talking about buying of a piece of equipment like a deep fat fryer for 50 or $75, you only use it once a year, you might as well buy a good cooler and try it like this. The point of the temperature of the danger zone is your turkey needs to stay below 40, 41 degrees-ish, okay? Like I said, depending on the state, it needs to stay below that. This is gonna stay about 37 to 39 degrees, somewhere through there. It fluctuates depending on what part of the meat it is because I've done all my tests before. Like this is our seventh year doing it. So I'm completely comfortable and confident that this is, this is gonna be okay for me. All right guys, so roughly 24 hours later, uh, you guys can see the temperature of the meat. It's about 36, 37 degrees. And then my water temperature, just like it would be in the refrigerator. Okay, so that's why I was telling you about your danger zone and your temperature zones and feeling confident that you can leave it overnight in your ice. Okay, with that being said, so it's brined. I haven't touched it. You guys can see there's still some ice in there. The next step, all I do is put it, take it out, put it into a sink, and I'm just going to kind of wash the brine off. I know what you're thinking. Why brine it all day if you're just going to wash it off? Really, it's just to get all, the, all this stuff, the big uh, cloves, the black peppercorns, stuff like that off there. And we're going to dry it off and show you, show you what else we're doing with it. All right, just light cold water. And I'm, like I said, I'm just going through it there, knocking the big things off. The sage leaves. All right, so I'm gonna let these drip dry for a minute. I'm gonna go wash my hands, then we're gonna come back. I got my temperature set about 275. That is my golden temperature. We're gonna get back to that temperature and why it's important in just a second. So we've given it time for our turkeys to dry a little bit. If you notice, I've got a sheet rack, a sheet tray with one of these like cooking cooling style racks on there. And this is how I do it. That way, there's so much fat that renders out that you're not boiling the bottom of the turkey. I think it's very important. So just like that, okay? I don't put the vegetables on the bottom. I honestly just don't feel like if you have eaten a turkey where there's been stuffed or there's vegetables on the bottom that you can tell the difference. I think the brine does it all for you. Now it's just a personal preference. Personally, Personally, I'm gonna season it just normally. What I would consider normal, nothing crazy. So garlic, salt, it helps dry that skin out. Good amount. Black pepper. Little poultry seasoning, not much. I don't want to overdo it. Cause really at this point, the flavors that you're putting on there now is skin only. These seasonings will not penetrate the skin and go through the meat. So now it's just about flavoring the skin and just a little bit of fresh rosemary. You guys know that I grow my rosemary in the garden. So this is just a little bit of fresh rosemary. All right, I'm gonna do the other one, and then we're gonna get back to the, the oven and show you guys the rest of that. When it comes to temperature, it's just my philosophy. 
you got to bear with me here. The hotter something cooks, the more moisture it scrapes from it. Because there's so much pressure into the meat. The juices, the blood, so on and so forth. To me, I find like 275 is the perfect sweet spot. It helps dry out the skin, and it helps cook your turkey at a, at a good pace without forcing the moisture out of it. And what is the most important thing about Thanksgiving? Juicy a juicy turkey. turkey. That tastes good, right? So that's the ideal temperature for me. It's 275, low and slow. It's going to take about two and a half, maybe hours. We're going to time it because I did not let my turkey come out and rest. I just got home from work. Um, typically, I'll let this sit out on the counter for about an hour-ish for the turkey temperature to come up while I'm doing other things for Thanksgiving. But we're just going to go ahead and put it in the oven like this. I already got my oven thermometers ready to go. And this side is going to have two of them. I talk about these bad boys all the time. If you don't have one, there's a link in the description below. Pick out whichever one you like. I firmly swear by these. All right. One is going to go on the thigh. You don't want to hit bone. And one is going to go to the breast. They do cook at different times. And this is why we do it like this. Now, to me, this cooks so much more evenly and so much softer that this is why I do it like this. This is 100% the reason. The aluminum foil is on the bottom, so I'm going to catch as much juice as possible. And if I was doing my um, stuffing, um, any type of Thanksgiving traditional stuff like that, I could use it for stock. I could use it for gravy, so on and so forth. I'm going to get that other one done. We're going to put it in the oven at 275. We're going to time it when we're done filming right now. Give you guys an idea. I do not baste. I want to reiterate. I do not take the fat and put it back on top. It, it absolutely does nothing to the skin. The skin has all the juices on there that it needs to be have on there. Okay. So once we're done with this, we'll come back out and we'll start probing it at different temperatures to give you guys an idea of what to look for. All right, guys, there you go. So it's taken two hours and 20 minutes, give or take. I got my dark meat about 170. It's a little high. This one registered a little bit lower. Uh, it looks like it's right on. That's a bone. So this one did register a little bit lower, okay? So the reason why I said, let's just go back real quick. I'm talking about basting. I don't baste. I feel like basting just adds moisture to the skin and I want the skin crispy. So here's kind of like the idea behind that. You're not gonna add any flavor at all, but you hear this? So that's the crispy skin that I like. And all that is is the natural skin rendering out. We never wavered on our temperature, it was 275. And so the next test I wanna do is kind of like a myth, a debunk. I hear all the time people say, rest your meat. I'm a big 100% firm believer of resting your meat. The times vary greatly depending on how hot the product is being cooked at, what temperature you bring your turkey up to, yada, yada. So what I want to do, like I do every single year, I'm just going to keep my thermometer inside here and I'm going to wrap the whole thing with aluminum foil. Okay? So this is what we're doing. And I'm going to give it a gauge how long it takes to get to 140 degrees. Once we get to 140 degrees, that'll give you an idea of how long you can literally rest your meat. Because the idea of letting your turkey rest for only 15 minutes, no, that thing, mm -mm. you want some juicy, juicy turkey, and this is how you're gonna get it. All right, so we let it rest. We've hit our internal temperature about 142 to 141. I just wanted to let it rest to see how long we could go. Remember, we started about 168 to 170. It's backed off all the way to about 141 to 142. It's taken a whole hour to get there. So the idea that you can rest a turkey for 15 minutes and carve it and everything's fine is absolute nonsense. Let it rest. Let it absorb back the flavor. Let's see what we got. All right, so here's the breast. This is like the prize possession, right? So,
This is why we cook our turkeys like this, and this is why we brine it. You ready? If you guys can see behind the camera right now, I talked about vultures and the clumps on Thanksgiving. They're circling right now. All you had to do is start carving and the kitchen is just full of people. Let's see what we got here. I don't know if you can see it on camera. See how juicy that is? <sighs> okay, let's see. Taste it. Oh geez, it feels just, it just feels juicy. <laughs> that meat is juicy. Oh. Mmm. That is the juiciest freaking turkey you've ever ate in your life. Yep, been putting juicy meat in your mouth since. <laughs> hey, our daughter's sitting right here. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you go. That's our version of the juicy Thanksgiving turkey. Hey, guys, I just want to wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Juicy turkey, cut it in half, brown it, 275. Don't over-season it. Perfect every time. Every time.